And we're back on Inside the Ropes, and we have been celebrating 2012 with various people from the wrestling world, and we thought it was about time that we got a female perspective. So for the second time ever on Inside the Ropes, we have a female guest. But unlike Diana Hart, this lady is a former women's champion. She's wrestled all over the world. And I think you'll know her either as Katie Lee Burchill from the WWE or Winter in TNA. We have Katie Lee on the line. How are you tonight? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm great, I'm great. All the better for, for having you on the show. Katie, the first thing that I wanted to kind of touch on was 2012 has been quite an odd year for women's wrestling in the US because there's been a lot of departures from both companies. In TNA, Angelina Love walked away, Velvet Sky and yourself, and in the WWE... Awesome Kong, Kelly Kelly, and Beth Phoenix all left the company. Um, in terms of yourself, what 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 led to you leaving TNA earlier on this year? Um, well, what led to me leaving was really they weren't using me anymore on the show, and then my contract ran out. So it wasn't like a you know a decision in any kind of way specifically. It was more, I guess, uh, it just sort of fizzled out. Yeah, and and do you think? I mean, like I say, there's a lot of people that have, have left wrestling this year. A lot of female wrestlers that have left this year. What do you think? There's a reason that so many people have left in 2012. Well, I think in uh, in TNA specifically, it was because they they'd gone from utilizing the girls as you know they had usually you know two spots on the show and everybody was involved in something that was like a real storyline. Everybody had something valuable to do, and then all of a sudden. You know, a lot of people were just sitting home and they'd, you know, bring you in, you know, here and there for a week to just have a random match. And they were really just utilizing one or two, you know, a couple of the girls on a regular basis. So, um, and then, you know, TNA and WWE are restricted to, you know, that company. So it's been a question of either financially, you know, for TNA, where if they don't use you and you don't get paid, you sort of say, okay, then... You know, because they restrict you on, you know, DVD appearances and stuff like that. So there comes a time when you just have to weigh up the odds and say, well, goodbye, because I have to go and, you know, work somebody else, somewhere else instead. And WWE, you know, even if it's not a financial observation, it could just be, you know, frustration of not, you know, not not getting to do what you want to do. So, I don't know. I, I think uh, I read, you know, for Beth Phoenix that I had more to do, that she, you know, she wanted to spend time with her family and stuff like that. So there might be... You know, Kelly Kelly, too, she's been so involved for so long. I'm sure they needed a break. So I think there's a different, you know, dynamic over there. But uh, that's pretty much what happened with me. And I think with Angelina Love, I think that's probably why she left. And, Katie, sometimes you hear in TNA that it can be a case of too many cooks in the kitchen. We were just wondering what the process was. You know, when you would arrive for a TV taping, finding out what it was that you were going to be doing that night, was it quite a complicated, confusing time? No, not really, because by the time we got there, it was pretty much set, especially, I mean, I really, you know, I was, my main uh, body of work that I got to do at TNA was when Vince Russo was there, so he was pretty much, you know, in terms of creative, he was sort of the, you know, the end point to, to talk to, um, and they, they were pretty organized, you know, when you arrived, you get, you got your piece of paper saying this is what you were going to do, and usually they were going to stick to it. Actually, it was, you know, pretty pretty organized once you got there that you knew this was going to happen, and and then they had times for you and stuff like that, so you knew when to get ready and everything. So, I mean, what happened in the weeks in between, you know, when they were in the office writing the show, obviously I, I don't have knowledge of. And Katie, 10 years ago, women's wrestling was a prominent part of television but in 2012 in particular it seems that it's been cut down to you know three minute matches if you're lucky very few promos you know you might see the girls walking to the ring if you're lucky and um, what what do you think um is going on with regards to that well i feel that it comes and goes i don't really feel that that's a, a new development in 2012 i think it's been going like that um really for the whole time that i was at wwe it was like that where they would every now and then they would have a really strong storyline with the girls and then all of a sudden it would be, you know, six girl tag matches where we'd have a minute, you know, to accomplish, you know, the match. So it really went from, you know, having a storyline to not having a storyline constantly. And I think it's partly because they have so many now, so it seems like everybody's sort of an inter- interchangeable. 
and they just want to, you know, throw some girls out there sometimes when they don't really know what else to do with them, you know, which I think I don't understand why it should be different for the girls and the boys. I don't understand why it should be harder to write storylines for the girls. But I don't know, because I've been watching WWE again recently, and I feel like they do sort of showcase the girls maybe better again now, I think. I seem to see more um, singles girls matches on the shows, and they seem to have more time too than than we did when I was there. Yeah, I mean it's strange because I mean maybe like ten years ago you would have seen Lita in one storyline and Trish Stratus in another, and Molly Holly in between all these different people. And yeah, I mean you're right. Is why should it be any different for the girls than it is for the guys? It's... Well, I think that's probably because they hire a whole bunch of girls because they think, oh, we'll get all these pretty girls to wrestle. And then once they have them, they feel like they have to, you know, take turns with them to to use them. Whereas, you know, back then there wasn't as many and the girls that were there then had stronger characters and then they they had, you know, by default, stronger storylines. Now, when you came into to TNA to work with Angelina Love, you were doing the, oh, the winter gimmick where at the beginning... Angelina seemed to be the only person that could see you, and there was sort of undertones of, you know, is she a vampire? Is she possessing her? Is it like um, hypno- hypnosis? Uh, what was the kind of um, the idea behind the gimmick? Was that Vince Russo's creation? Did you guys work together on the character? It was Vince Russo's uh, creation. Um, he talked to me about it, and, you know, I was able to, you know, bring suggestions and stuff like that. It was just, you know, it was his brainchild, as it were. Um, I really liked the storyline. I know there was a little bit of a, you know, some people loved it and some people thought it was stupid, but to me, it's, you know, it's something different and I just, I just enjoy having like a real storyline that goes from week to week and that develops and that we have a relationship with another character that develops and changes and I just find that, you know, that's what keeps me watching a show. So I was really chuffed that I was able to be, you know, part of a storyline like that. So that was a really great time for me. And um, in a hardcore justice last year, you became you became like the first British woman to win the TNA Knockouts title. And I know you'd won the tag titles before. Talk us through, like, what what is your memory of of that night of winning the being the first British woman to win the TNA Knockouts title from Mickey James? Oh, this is. It was just really exciting for me because obviously um, the championship was something that I didn't do in WWE that I may have, you know, wanted to. And then to be, you know, in TNA, um, the second largest company. And and I really uh, was a big fan of TNA before I went there. So I was really excited about being there in the first place and then to be involved, you know, not not just to the champ- get the championship, but also to to gain it, you know, again, as I said, like being part of a storyline that made it like even more, you know, extra special. And it was just, it was just really cool experience because I loved being that character and I loved the way that everything was set up and the way that it built to that moment. So that made it, you know, even more special than just winning a championship. It was like the whole thing around it, the character and the story and everything sort of came together. And then obviously it's a huge honor for me that I got to do that. So it was uh, very exciting. When you, were, when you were in WWE, one of, the, one of the matches that you were involved in was the, the Diva Battle Royal at WrestleMania 25, where they brought back past Divas and they had the current ones. And um, Trish Stratus and Lita have both publicly said that they turned that match down because they kind of thought it was quite meaningless and it didn't really, it wasn't really as good as they could have done something with the Divas at WrestleMania 25. What was your experience as someone who was a bit younger, a bit, a bit newer to the business, I guess, who was kind of working your way up? How did you feel about sort of being in there with some of the former Divas and the concept of the match itself? Well, I thought the idea of it was decent, but I thought that they really, they made no we all separate mention of any of the former divas. They made no, you know, to do about them being there. It was really kind of, I felt they wasted them, you know, with that, especially since, you know, when the match happened, it was so short and there was no real emphasis on the former divas being there. So I thought that was a waste. I thought if they were going to do it and there needed to be a better, um, I don't know, like a better structure around it or more time or something where you could, 
you know, why have those girls back if you're not going to showcase them? It, it did seem a little bit strange that they would bring such big names back and then not even announce them to the ring. You didn't really yeah, know unless totally. you spotted some people. You didn't realize they were in the match. Totally. I think they announced their names or whatever, but, you know, there was no separate entrances. There was no big whatever. Now, obviously, Katie, you've had uh, massive success in the U.S. You've worked for the WWE and for TNA. And I suppose when you left to go over there, perhaps the U.K. scene maybe wasn't as vibrant as it is now. There's many companies all over um, Scotland, England, Wales, who are um, are doing a lot and are being very successful just now. There's even some sort of female-only promotions that are, are coming up in the last six months. You were back in July. Where did you work when you came back over? I worked for UK Wrestling and uh, New Generation Wrestling, and I worked for Eve. And how did you find that? How did you find the experience to come back? I mean, it must be a very different scene. It was really fun, and it was awesome. It was really fun, and it was awesome to see there's so many girls now. When I was there, it was, you know, there was maybe three or four in the whole of England, and now there's, you know, all these girls. There was even a twin versus twin match, which, you know, I was greatly excited by, you know, just, Lots and lots of girls. It was it was really awesome. Everybody's working so hard and really wants to make it. It's fun. And uh, while you were back over here in the summer, did you work with or see any sort of young UK female wrestlers that you saw and were like, they are the future. Like those girls could be over in the US one day doing what I had a chance to do. Yeah, I mean quite a few. I mean there's a alpha female obviously who's doing really really well over there, and she sort of. Uh, I think positioned herself as one of the top talents. You know, she's obviously she looks impressive. She's got a beautiful face. She's got the right professional attitude. She's working really hard. You know, the twins were all adorable. You know, and had also a great, great look. Both you know the Blossom twins and and the Dark twins. But they, um, you know, they had great looks about them. Um, the girl that I wrestled, Nikki, she was really you know, passionate. She did really well in the ring with me. A lot, actually, that I think could, you know, if they really set their mind to it. Again, there's only, you know, there's limited spots, and then there's limited spots for, well, you'd think there's limited spots for Europeans, but, I mean, look at WWE, how they used to have, you know, one token British guy, and then they went on a, you know, hiring rage, and, you know, they have Wade Barrett and Seamus, and you know, a couple of other British guys, you know, and the Williams are doing well over here. So I think there's more and more, you know, people getting the chance from Europe to come over here. You know, and I realize that people do want to see. And how do you feel about, you know, you talk, you've talk? you talked a lot in this interview about uh, about characters and about wanting to, to be doing something more than just, you know, banging the mat and going back to, going back to the locker room. Do you think, I mean, because when... You know, when you were growing up and when I was growing up, there was so many, you know, larger than life characters in American wrestling and, and stuff like that. Do you think that's something that is missing now? And what what do you think of wrestling now? Do you think there are enough characters, or do you think they've not got enough? Well, when I say character, I don't mean you know a dentist and a and a plumber. <laughs> you know, I mean I think that Dolph Ziggler, for example, is an incredible character. Um, I think Randy Orton just by default is a character because he's just he has that as- essence of fascinating. Um, John Cena is still a character. Um, you know, the Shield I'm obsessed with. You know, I think they're they're an interesting character. CM Punk, you know, fantastic. I think all of those people have, you know, different layers to them. You know, they're not like a specific you know, where you pigeonhole them in a specific, maybe, you know, Dolph Ziggler a little more than the others, but even he, you know, he brings in, that's what makes him so fantastic, is that he's not a caricature. You know, he has layers to himself. You know, he comes in as very clean-cut, college preppy looking, but he's vicious and he's mean, you know. And then you have CM Punk, who's just so, you know, he's just really reinvented himself as this, fantastic he always is amazing on the mic and the Miz is a great character I think they have a lot of great characters and what do you think about um, you know in terms of female wrestlers on TV right now I mean AJ is probably one of the biggest characters she's gone through a lot of transformations this year um, 
What do you think of her character and her place as sort of a prominent, um, you know, she's sort of going through all the guys in the roster and she's portraying this crazy character. What do you, what do you think of that? Um, I do like it. I have, you know, I'll be honest with you, I didn't watch for a long time. I've just started watching it again for the past month, so I missed out on all her, you know, Daniel Bryan, Kane, CM Punk escapades. Um, but I do find her interesting. I find her engaging. I think she does a good job. She, you know, she's cute. Um, I was a little confused by the whole, you know, forbidden affair with John Cena thing because it was obviously not a forbidden affair in any way, shape, or form. Um, but, uh, <laughs> they came out of that at the other end. So, you know, it's interesting to see what happens next. Um, obviously, Vicky always, like, amazing performer, so that she's being, you know, she's being utilized, you know, and that concept is obviously, you know, pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just started watching it again. So I'm, so far, I'm, you know, I'm on board. For your, for your fans, for your fans that, that still want to see you in the ring, you said you were doing a couple of upcoming dates. Where can people see you if they, if, if, cause we've got some listeners in the U.S., so if, they, if people want to come and see you wrestle, where are you going to be? Well, I'm going to be in Lexington, Virginia on January 5th. And actually, I'm going to be wrestling my former tag team partner, Angelina Love, which can be especially exciting since, you know, I've worked with her for so long, but we never had a, a one-on-one match together. So that's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, February 9th, I'm going to be in New Jersey, Raleigh for um, Blow uh, and PWS. And then on the 16th, I'll be in New York for FWE. And in March, rumor has it, I may be starting with Crossfire in Nashville. So, you know, watch out for those. Fantastic. Um, thank you very much for being a part of the show. Um, we've really oh, thanks it. for having me. And, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll see you back over here at some point. Yes, hopefully.